In this video, we want to talk about the rational zeros theorem. So we've been spending quite a bit of time trying to find zeros of polynomial functions. And in the past few examples, I would give you a polynomial function, and then I tell you what some factors are, or I'll tell you what a zero would be. And then you can use that information to take this big, long polynomial and whittle it down to something that is more manageable. In particular, you're trying to get to something that's uh, quadratic at the highest, something that's degree two. But sometimes I don't give you any clues. We don't have any information that we can work off of. And this is where the rational zeros theorem comes into play. Now what this does is that it tells us something about zeros that are rational, meaning it can be written as a fraction. So this doesn't give us any clue or any information about zeros that are complex or about zeros that contain radicals. It doesn't tell us anything about that. It just tells us information about rational zeros. So it says that if you have a polynomial function and you have integer coefficients and you've got a constant term that's not zero, then any and all rational zeros have to be of the form p over q. Now, what do p and q mean? Well, p is going to be a factor from the constant term and q is going to be a factor from the lead coefficient. That's, that's the way it's always gonna be if you have a rational zero. For example, Let's take a look at the function f of x is equal to 2 x to the third minus 9x squared plus 7x plus 6. So if I don't give you any information and I give you this guy and I not and I now say find all zeros. So I want you to find all zeros for this polynomial function. Well, let's start with what we know. We know that since this has a degree of three, we should have three solutions. Now, I didn't give you any of these guys, but if I can find one of them, then you'll be left with something that's quadratic, which is going to be pretty easy. So we're gonna use the rational zeros theorem to find one solution. We're gonna use synthetic division to turn that polynomial from degree three into degree two and then we'll use our methods for solving quadratic equations to finish getting the other two zeros. So, since we don't have any information, we're gonna start off with what P over Q could be. So P over Q, and I'm gonna write a plus or minus in front of this because we don't really know anything about the signs, we don't know if it should be a positive or negative, and we're gonna list all of the factors that we have for P and all the factors we have that could be Q. So P is gonna come from factors of six. And so you just have to take six and write all of its factors. That would be one, two, three, and six. And you're gonna look at Q. Q has to be a factor of the leading coefficient, so it has to be a factor of two. So those possible factors are one and two. And what I'm gonna do from this is I'm gonna make a list of all of the possible rational zeros, all the possible combinations I could get from this. So here's the way that I like to do it. I'm just gonna put a plus or minus here in front of a big parentheses, I'm just gonna list all the different combinations, meaning combinations of a factor in the numerator with a factor in the denominator here. So I'm gonna start with one. One over one is one. One over two is one half. So these are possible rational zeros. Then I'm gonna move on to two. So two over one is two. Two over two is one, which we already have, so I don't need to write that again. Then I go to three. Three over one is three. And then I get three over two, so that's not really fun, but I can't really control that. And then I have six, so six over one is six, and six over two is three, and I already have that written right there. <clears throat> so here's what we're saying. We're saying that if there is a zero of this polynomial function that is a rational number, it has to be one of these guys, uh, either positive or negative. That means if you were to say, hey, I found that one of the zeros, <clears throat> excuse me, is five. Five is a rational number. However, five is not listed here among the possible rational zeros. So if you try to tell me that x equals five is a zero, I know you're lying. I know it can't be that way because these are the only possible numbers I can have 
that are rational for my zeros. Now, again, let me remind you that rational zeros theorem doesn't tell you anything about zeros that might be complex or that contain radicals. We know nothing about those guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to start testing these guys to see which one works. Now, what you can do is just take an extra piece of paper and just start, you know, writing this stuff down, doing synthetic division to see what works. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Um, the first one that you would try, the first ones you would try should be the integer values. Don't go to the fractions, okay? Start with your nice uh, integers. For example, one. Now I could do synthetic division with one, but the really easy way to check to see if one is a zero is to take these coefficients and add them up. If the coefficients and the constant term add up to give you zero, that means that x equals one is a zero. But if you look here, 2 minus 9 is negative 7, plus 7 is 0, plus 6 is 6, so that guy doesn't work. All right, um, so let's try negative 1. Now again, you could plug negative 1 in, but I think you're going to find out that if I do synthetic division, with all the synthetic division, all the practice that we've had so far, um, it makes it quite easy. So we're just going to go over here to the side and just kind of sketch this out. So we'll bring down the 2, multiply, that's negative 2, Add is negative 11. Multiply is 11. This does not look good. That's 18. Negative 18. This is... That's not right. Because see, what we're trying to find here is we're trying to find one of these numbers that whenever I do synthetic division with it, I get a remainder of 0. All right. So that doesn't work. Now, the next number that I would try would be 2. I don't want to try the one half. I mean, you can if you really want to work with the fractions, but it's probably in your best interest to not do that right now. So let's do synthetic division with two, and let's see how this guy goes. So two, negative nine, seven, and six. Really, pay attention to your signs because that's going to be crucial, as it always is. So bring down the two, multiply to get four, add to get negative five, Multiply, I get negative 10, add, I get negative 3. Multiply, to get negative 6, add, and I finally get my remainder of 0, which is great. So now we're going to take that information, let's make it a little bit uh, neater, a little bit nicer here. So we did synthetic division using 2, and when we did synthetic division using 2, we came up with a remainder of 0. Okay. So bring down the 2, and we just go through this like we've been doing. So we get 4, add to get negative 5, multiply to get negative 10, add to get negative 3, multiply to get negative 6. So we get a remainder of 0. So let's see what this really means for us, okay? So kind of going back to all of the stuff that we've talked about with synthetic, with synthetic division, that means that my function, so here was my original function, by identifying one of the zeros, I was able to break this guy down. Now, this is my zero, which means it comes from the factor x minus 2. And then this quotient gets translated as 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. And since we're in this factoring phase, let's go ahead and finish the factorization. So if you need to take it off to the side to see how this guy factors, you can. You know what, let's, let's do that. Okay. So just a reminder, so 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. I want to do the AC method, right? So it means 2 times 3 is 6. And what are factors of 6 that will, pay attention here, subtract give you 5. That's 1 and 6. So as we've done so many times in the past, we rewrite this. So 2x squared, this is going to be uh, plus 1x minus 6x minus 3. So again, we're just going back to the factoring stuff that we've seen many, many times. 
So the common factor here is x times 2x plus 1. And in the second group, you begin with a minus, so minus. And these guys have a common factor of 3. So you are factoring or dividing out that negative 3, and you again have 2x plus 1. So when you finish the factoring by grouping, we get 2x plus 1 times x minus 3. Okay, so now let's just transfer that over here. So 2x plus 1 times x minus 3. Now all we've done so far is factor that original polynomial. The question here says find all zeros. All right, so if you want to find all zeros, you are basically going to be setting each of these factors equal to zero. So from here, when you set that guy equal to zero, we've done this many, many times, you get two. When you set this equal to zero, you would have to subtract the one, divide by two, and here, when you set that equal to zero, you get positive three. Now, please notice that all three of these solutions, all three of these zeros are rational. And I want you to compare them with the possible rational zeros that we could have had from the rational zeros theorem. So we know that two could have been a zero because that's the one we used, pulled it from here. Negative one half is right here, because remember it could be a plus, it could be a minus, we don't really know, so we're trying to account for all possibilities. Three is also another possible rational zero, and you see it show up right here, right? So if we get something that's rational that is not one of these guys up here, we would know that we did something wrong, okay? So these are all of the zeros. Now let's go for bonus. So when we were talking about uh, polynomial functions in the last particular, in the last section, we also went ahead and said, uh, what are the x-intercepts? So from here, since all three of these guys are real, each one becomes an x-intercept. So you get two zero, we get negative one half zero, and we get three zero. Remember that for x-intercepts, all intercepts, they are ordered pairs. So in particular with x-intercepts, it's the x value comma zero. And then we can, again for a bonus, talk about what the y-intercept is. And we know that for every y-intercept it's going to be zero comma something. If you go back and you look at the original function, if I plug in zero, 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 the only thing left is six. So the y-intercept is zero comma six. And if you had a problem like this on the test and it said, um, write your function as a product of linear factors, and that's gonna be this guy right here, okay? So f of x as a product of linear factors, basically factor the whole thing, is this. Here are your zeros. We listed all of our intercepts, okay? So let's try another problem here right after the break.